So this is Emerald Bay, and this is me and a group of hired mercenaries. Now the plan is simple. Using my RC submarine, I will throw it in the lake, and dive to the bottom, and I will find some treasure. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Isaac Explorers, you have gone mad. Like how, this plan is not gonna work. How do you even know there's treasure down there? The truth is, I actually have no idea. But I do have a grudge, so let me explain. Over a year ago, I made a TikTok where I went to this island and explored this castle. There was nothing in the castle, the whole video kinda sucked, but what I did discover is when you're at the castle, you can see a shipwreck in the lake. And there's not just one of them, according to my insights, there's actually four. Now the problem is, to get to the shipwrecks, you gotta be able to dive down over a hundred feet. Now sadly, I'm not scuba certified and I have no idea how to scuba dive. So, I made a deal that if the TikTok got half a million likes, I would buy this RC submarine. Alright folks, it's been exactly one month and not much has changed, except for the fact that the RC sub just got delivered. So, it's time to bring it inside and unbox it. Surprisingly, this is actually the first unboxing I've ever really filmed, so I had no idea what I was doing. But, here is everything out of the box. Now before we could actually use the sub, we had to figure out how to use it, so that took about half an hour. And then, it was time for the test drive. Now most of you, I'm guessing, have never driven an RC submarine. I don't blame you. Before this video, I had never driven one either. Now my main goal for the test drive was just to not break the submarine on the first day I bought it. I drove it around the pool, and honestly, it was pretty easy to drive. It was just like flying a drone, but you're in water. But enough talk. It was a great test drive. Let's go find some treasure. Now the drive from my house to Emerald Bay takes exactly four and a half hours. To pass the time, we listened to music, sang songs, and filmed a lot of random shots on my 360 camera. I mean a lot. But after a lot of driving, eventually, we made it. Alright folks, you probably can't hear any of- Yeah, no, the audio sucks, I'm just gonna explain it. Behind me right there is Emerald Bay, and to get there we gotta walk down about an hour hiking with all our stuff. So we loaded everything up and began hiking down. Now at this point the goal was simple, make it down to the water and find ourselves a good launch spot. Here we are, this is the launch spot. Shot to the island, a good spot to hide our loot. What more could you ask? Anyways, we were losing sunlight fast, so we started setting up camp. But I also want to take a moment to acknowledge that me and Matt are wearing the exact same thing. Like that was not planned. We are. We just happened to be wearing the exact same thing, I don't know. Anyways, but before we went out into the water, it was crucial that we took the drone up to scout out the, the water to see if we could find the shipwrecks that way. Um, I, I forgot to film, but the, the wind was really bad, so I had to bring the drone in. Luckily, I was able to land it safely, and no damage was done to the drone. Holy shit. Not my best landing. Yeah, if you couldn't guess, I was being sarcastic. I, I f***ed the drone up bad. But that was about to be the least of our worries, because in that very moment, a storm was rolling in. And I'm talking a, a thunderstorm. It was raining, it was thundering. This whole video was going to sh This was, this was bad guys, I'm not gonna lie. Alright, so this is our vessel. It's not, not the greatest vessel in the world. Sadly for us, the storm was picking up. As I was filming the unboxing, we heard even more thunder. If we're in the water, and lightning strikes the water, do we also get shocked? I am still genuinely curious. If I'm in a boat in water, and lightning strikes it, do I also get shocked? Someone please let me know. Regardless, we decided to play it safe, and launch the RC sub from shore, and drive it out far enough to hopefully find the shipwrecks that way. Now in this current moment, I'm absolutely terrified. I'm scared that I'm gonna somehow lose this RC drone, there's currents in the water, it's cold outside, I, I'm just terrified. Oh, but that's not all. To make matters worse, for some reason the RC sub kept disconnecting inside the water. Every time it would disconnect, it would float to the bottom of the lake, jam into rocks, and I was so scared it would get twisted in something and I would be losing it. The more I drove the RC drone, the more I realized that I was very underqualified to be piloting. We decided that we should call it quits for the day. At this point, it was really raining hard, so we had our hour-long hike back up to the top of the mountain. This hike was really fun, guys. I loved hiking an hour with all my gear in the rain. It, it was great. Regardless, I wasn't giving up. I checked us into a hotel, we hit the hay, and we decided we were
gonna try again tomorrow. Welcome back to day two of shipwreck hunting. Today's theme is success because failure is not an option. Today I brought along my friend CT who is actually scuba certified. Basically what this means is if the RC submarine can't get the job done, I will have wasted a thousand dollars and I will send CT down and he will scuba dive and he will find the shipwrecks. Anyways, we made it to the camp spot, the conditions were great. I also gave CT a, a protective GoPro case because the GoPro just kind of breaks if you take it down too far in the water. Anyways, we inflated our inflatable raft, got the RC submarine ready, and brought both down to the water. We both climbed in and we got ready to hit the waters. Now I don't know if other YouTubers cameramen can do this, but mine is a damn good rudder because I forgot both the oars for the inflatable boat, so he just kicked and damn, look how fast we're moving. I'm, I'm impressed, honestly. So at this current moment, we didn't have the exact coordinates of the shipwreck. We had a general location, but if we wanted to find the shipwreck, we would have to use the RC sub. We're switching to the submarine's POV for now. This is what it looked like when we tossed it in the water, and before we could get to the shipwreck, it would have to go down over 300 feet. This actually took quite a bit, so I sped it up as it descends down to the bottom, and eventually, we started to see something come into view. At first I got really excited because I thought it was the shipwreck. I was like, damn, that was easy, we can all go home now. But after closer inspection, it turned out just to be rocks. So, me and my team then spent the next hour and a half scouring the bottom of the lake with the RC sub. Now surprisingly, it actually wasn't that hard to control the RC sub down at the bottom. The biggest challenge was the visibility. What you guys are looking at right now is the nice 4K version the submarine recorded, but what I was looking at was the live feed, which was super blurry. Regardless of the bad connection, I continued searching, and this is like a time lapse of what I was looking at as I was searching the ocean floor. Sadly though, after almost an hour of searching, the only thing I ended up finding was this bucket. The submarine eventually was about to die, so I was forced to bring it back up to the surface. Sadly, I never found the shipwreck that day. I also wasn't able to send the diver down because uh, his wetsuit wasn't thick enough, so he would have froze to death. A whole, whole other thing. Regardless, I will find this shipwreck. I have the whole summer to do it, that's my promise to you guys. 